Hello, this is the June 2012 video edition of the Iowa General Fund Monthly Revenue Memo. I am Jeff Robinson, Senior Fiscal Analyst for the Iowa Legislative Services Agency, the nonpartisan support agency of the Iowa Legislature. This video will cover Iowa General Fund revenue and tax refunds for the month of June, as well as the 12-month period that is cash fiscal year 2012. I will also discuss in some detail net general fund revenue history by revenue source. Iowa net general fund revenue increased 13.6% in June when compared to June of 2011, with individual income and corporate income tax as well as sales tax, inheritance tax, and insurance premium tax each providing significant positive growth for the month. Individual income tax and insurance premium tax both were positively influenced by calendar issues this June, with June insurance premium tax picking up revenue that was deposited in May last year, and individual income tax benefiting from a due date issue that will negatively influence July comparisons. Those two issues provided about $25 million of the $71 million in net revenue growth for the month. However, June ended on a weekend this year, and this calendar issue pushed an estimated 20 to $25 million in receipts from June into July. So after making adjustments for these three calendar issues, net revenue really did grow around $70 million for June, a double-digit increase in percentage terms. Turning to the situation year to date, net revenue for the 12 months that are cash fiscal year 2012 increased 5%. And for comparison, the March Revenue Estimating Conference, or REC, net revenue estimate for the fiscal year is positive 2.6%. This cash fiscal year calculation indicates net revenue exceeded projections by about $136 million. While this $136 million is a good point in time indicator of how the full fiscal year will end for fiscal year 12, it is not the final number for the year. Receipts that arrive after June 30th that are properly attributed to fiscal year 12 remain to be processed. And from the refund side, Refunds issued in July and August also count against 2012. So while this $136 million is a good estimate today, the final number is not known until early October. I will now provide some historic perspective on Iowa general fund revenue by major category. The following charts are based on actual receipts with tax refunds subtracted from gross receipts, so the graphs reflect net revenue. The lines depict the 12-month moving average of net revenue starting June 1994. Transfer revenue is not included in this math. Individual income tax revenue is the most significant source of general fund revenue. Individual income tax revenue peaked in November of 2008 at $2.91 billion. It did not exceed that peak until December 2011, a period of 37 months. Over the course of the 18 years depicted, the individual income tax path has been impacted by a 10% rate reduction and two major U.S. recessions. Sales and use tax revenue shows a similar recent pattern to income tax, peaking in November of 2008 and not exceeding that peak until April 2012, a period of 41 months. The most recent three months, April, May, and June, have shown significant growth in net sales and use tax deposits. Corporate tax deposits peaked at $372 million in June of 2008 and declined almost 50% by January 2010. A significant recovery began May of 2011 and the June 2008 annual peak was exceeded with the strong deposits of June of 2012. Other taxes include the insurance tax, bank franchise tax, inheritance tax, and cigarette and tobacco taxes. The first 12 years of this graph were negatively influenced by tax reductions with federal and state changes to inheritance and estate taxation as well as a 50% reduction in the state insurance premium tax. The large increase around 2007 was the result of a $1 increase in the cigarette tax, while the recent decrease was due to a change in the deposit destination of $106 million in annual cigarette tax revenue. As a result, annual general fund revenue from these other taxes is essentially unchanged from 18 years ago. Non-tax deposits, called other revenue, include fees, judicial revenue, revenue from state institutions, interest, the profit from the state's wholesale liquor business, and $60 million in annual gambling revenue. Over the 18 years, some sources of other revenue, such as institutional payments and judicial revenue, have been diverted from the general fund and used for specific purposes. In addition, general fund interest revenue has declined substantially due to the recent low interest rate environment. As a result of these influences, 
the percent of net general fund revenue that is derived from non-tax sources has fallen from 9 to 10 percent in the late 1990s to just 6 percent today. Overall net general fund revenue for the 12 months ending June 2012 equaled $6.12 billion, $20 million above its previous peak in November of 2008. Over the past three to six months, all major revenue sources have shown good growth when compared to the trend up to that point. Corporate and sales tax each posted significant gains this year, and the final three months of the fiscal year were highlighted by individual income tax gains, a source that had been lagging as late as the end of March. To summarize, June 2012 was a significant growth month, whether observing it from an adjusted or an unadjusted basis. Fiscal year 2012 finish the cash year on a high note, with very good growth across all major revenue sources in the final three months. Looking forward, it is unlikely that sales tax and corporate tax will contribute the same level of dollar growth in the new fiscal year. Together, they grew $215 million in fiscal year 12. But the recent strength in income tax deposits could very well step that source back into its usual role, and it will once again become the primary source of general fund revenue growth. I very much appreciate your time and interest in Iowa General Fund Revenue. Goodbye, have a great summer, and please check out the next monthly video memo that will be posted in early August.